The Coin Week podcast is brought to you by PCGS. Visit PCGS.com to take advantage of this quarter's grading specials. Hello, everyone. This is Queen Week editor Charles Morgan. I have a little bit of sad news to pass along, if you can't already tell, looking at the name of this podcast episode and then seeing the picture. But a friend of Queen Week, one of the founders of Queen Week, David Lasso, has passed away from complications following a recent surgery. David was ANA Life member number 1726 and I know his membership into the ANA meant a lot to him. He served as a governor of the association from 1993 to 1995. Many of you remember David Lasso as the man who would travel the country with his video camera shooting Cool Coins videos for Coin Week, shooting lectures and seminars for the Central States Numismatic Society or FUN or the ANA or whichever organization was putting on uh, meaningful numismatic presentations at coin shows. David was a pioneer in videography for the coin hobby. Uh, He began collecting in 1956, uh, and after serving as a coin reporter and journalist for the Financial News Network, went out on his own with a video camera and an idea to provide numismatic education in the form of VHS tapes. He founded a number of different companies before coming to a partnership with Scott Purvis at Coin Week. He founded the Media Resources Corporation, AdVision Incorporated, uh, and later Coin Television. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, David created a network of coin dealers across the country who would provide rental opportunities for his many video cassettes. Uh, these were video cassettes uh, derived from presentations and interviews. One of uh, David's proudest accomplishments, I think, in the video area was a film that he did uh, for the ANA starring James Earl Jones. He also produced a numismatic video titled Grading Mint State U.S. Coins, which was the standard video uh, instruction for the ANA for several years. He started taping ANA Numismatic Theater in 1989 and uh, eventually caught the attention of Coin Week founder Scott Purvis. Scott had already had a website called CoinLink, which provided links to various national coin dealers and was a very popular internet site. Scott thought... Well, I want to expand my idea to uh, include news and videos and things like that. So he saw David as an essential partner in this uh, journey. Uh, So the two uh, struck up a a conversation, a friendship, and after about a year of back and forth, they decided to to go into it and launch Coin Week. Now, I met David a few years later. I think it was March 2013 at the Whitman Expo in Baltimore. I had a couple conversations, I think, with Scott and uh, a few emails back and forth. And I was interested in coming on board with Coin Week as a staff writer uh, and content curator manager. And I was still a baby in the hobby. Uh, I had collected for uh, many years off and on, you know, as somebody, uh, you know, who's just coming up and going to college and, you know, I served in the army for a few years. I, I really didn't have the resources to play with coins at a sufficient level to, to truly feel like I was acclimated to the broader hobby. But I was eager to learn and eager to study and I, and I had put my mind to doing that. And so when I Asked to join Coin Week, Scott wanted me to reach out to David and to talk to him about it. And uh, when I showed up to Baltimore, David gave me one of the more difficult interviews slash conversations I had ever had. It made me realize instantly how much numismatics meant to him, how much a life of dedicated study had impacted the way he saw the hobby. And... Uh, proved to me that I had a lot to learn. I left that interview sure of David's talent and, and, and brilliance, but 
not quite sure of how I would fit into the puzzle. And I remember driving home and, and I, and it was about a three hour drive and, and I call Scott, uh, and, uh, I say, well, you know, I don't know how it went. And Scott was a little bit surprised to hear this because he was very optimistic. Uh, he's a very optimistic guy. Uh, he b- really believes in people and he believed in me enough that, uh, he and David had that conversation about how coin week would bring me on. And, uh, they did. My first coin convention uh, with Coin Week was the uh, National Money Show in Atlanta, and David was there. David was uh, a fixture at all of the national coin shows. He had quite a busy travel schedule, and he was often asked not only to film lectures and segments, but promotional videos for the uh, convention organizers. At that time, he had just wrapped up a very lengthy interview with uh, Stax Bowers co-founder Harvey Stack, which really set a gold standard for the type of content that Queen Week was capable of producing. At that time, our most popular videos on our YouTube channel, which was really, you know, a small channel, only had a few thousand followers, but our most popular videos were Cool Coins videos, which uh, David would cart his camera around the bourse and ask different dealers uh, what was their coolest coin that they had in their case. Uh, And David had a knack for knowing who to talk to because David knew coins and he knew when a dealer knew their stuff. And so at the ANA National Money Show, uh, I had an eye-opening experience uh, getting to see the hobby in a way that would have taken me years to see. And it's all because I was being let in under the wing of uh, David Lasseau. That year was the year that the United States Mint was getting ready to release the baseball uh, commemorative coins. And it was a not quite yet time for them to be on sale, but they were on display. And David put me in, in front of the camera and had me hold the coin up. And the process of going through this taught me the importance of patience and how the videos that we shoot at these shows are representations of reality, but they aren't necessarily filming reality. You have to hold the coin a certain way so that the overhead light doesn't create too much glare. You have to hold it steady so when the camera zooms in on the coin, it can see the coin without your fingers shaking. And the importance of having well manicured hands because no matter how beautiful the coin is, If your fingers look gnarly, that's what the uh, viewers are going to focus on. It taught me about the importance of looking into the camera and communicating directly with the audience in a confident, assured manner. And he also taught me the particulars of the technology that was being used. The Seckler tripod with its liquid head, the commercial grade camcorder, the Sennheiser microphones, everything that one needed to know in order not to make rookie mistakes out in the bourse when you're capturing things and you only had one chance to get it right. David took me to the Pogue sales that were put on by Stax Bowers and Sotheby's. This for the present generation was as important a sale as the Eliasberg sale was to the last generation. And you could only get it right because they weren't going to do the auction again. And David was the confident camera technician who knew how to pull it off. And I remember sitting up in the box seats with my still camera, getting alternate angles of the paddles going up, understanding that there was a real difference in what the two of us were doing. David was recording the event for posterity And I was capturing the emotion. And together, we put together some great footage of the sale. I remember the many dinners we had and how David was a very spiritual person. And I don't necessarily mean religious, although he was. But David seemed to be the kind of person who really believed that there was something more to our being here. And I could see his conviction through how teary-eyed he got when he was able to express how much he loved people. And I think that that was exhibited anytime anybody walked up to David. He was always 
cheerful and friendly and willing to listen. It seemed that David was always willing to give up some of his energy to those who were eager to approach him. David left Queen Week in August of 2015, a year after he had suffered a stroke. And when he had that stroke, you know, we were not only concerned about David and his health and his well-being, but we, we knew that we had to continue to do Queen Week and to continue to make videos. It was only because David had taken me under his wing that I was able to step in in a pinch and try to emulate what he had done. And I remember in the early days of doing that, even though I, you know, I had fresh equipment and, and, you know, an eagerness to see, see it through how much I was terrified of messing up and not knowing how to do something that David would have just had in the back of his head. You know, those early videos I made were, were very rough, but I did bring some ideas into them and uh, luckily for Coin Week, uh, we were able to accelerate the growth of our, our YouTube channel. And for the remainder of that year that David was with us uh, before we parted ways, uh, we worked with him to develop strategies for new videos and to lay out a vision of where we wanted to go with the channel. Uh, and one of the things that I was most interested in was to go and digitize David's analog collection of videos that he had been recording since the 80s. I felt like it would be incredibly important to preserve these conversations and personalities because I believe that it's the people in numismatics which makes the hobby so interesting. And David must have had a gold mine of footage, I thought. Well, luckily for the hobby, after David left us and relaunched his coin television, a company and website. He was able to reach an agreement with the Newman Numismatic Portal and pay the cost of digitizing his archives. And many of these videos are available for viewing on the NNP website. And I, I hope in the years to come that an effort will be undertaken to digitize all of it. You know, I think it would be a loss for the hobby to be robbed of the opportunity to listen to John J. Ford or uh, John J. Pittman or any of these preeminent numismatists uh, from the 80s and 90s whose commentary and, and vibrancy and enthusiasm for the hobby were preserved in analog tape. When I ran for the governor of the ANA, uh, David was supportive uh, and, and gave me encouragement and was always willing to talk to me on the side, even though we were no longer working together. Uh, and even though we often had creative disagreements, I, I consider David a friend. Uh, I'm lucky to have known him and work with him. And my, uh, my heart goes out for his friends and his family. And, uh, as a member of the numismatic community, we all owe David a debt of gratitude for his willingness to archive us in our happiest moments. And that is when we were together and enjoying coins and telling stories about them. So David, if you're up there listening, uh, thank you for uh, your friendship and mentorship and for everything you did for the hobby. Uh, we'll certainly miss you, but we appreciate everything that you've left us and we hope you're uh, resting in power. <laughs>